habitat is beneficial to not just the pond owners, but also the fish in them for a wide variety of reasons. And it provides a place to catch fish and tracks fish, especially larger predators, where they can ambush their prey. There are two primary types of habitat. One is man-made, which includes things like brush piles, pallets, and stake beds. PVC structures and plastic structures include things like the Georgia Cube, a whole host of marketed structures, and then a whole host of other do-it-yourself type structures that might include like irrigation pipe and concrete. They have some limitations in that they don't provide significant increase in the primary productivity of the pond. They serve primarily as a place to catch fish. The other type of habitat would be natural vegetation. And although a lot of pond owners think initially they'd like to avoid that, it's actually the most important aspect of having a healthy pond. It provides increased food supply for the fish and the increased water clarity that it to produce food. Aquatic plants also benefit the pond owners, making their pond more resistant to summer fish kills. The clear water provides a, a deeper light penetration, which adds an increased volume of oxygen for their pond. There are several species of plants that are appropriate for pond owners. For small ponds, the different types are limited. Eelgrass, or wild celery, is probably one of the most beneficial. It's a plant that grows under the water, has grassy-like leaves, tends not to grow too deep, and provides a lot of structure to produce food for the fish that are in the pond. Three-square bulrush is another highly desirable species. It produces fairly dense stands, doesn't grow very deep, and maintains a very neat growth appearance. Very beneficial in the pond for controlling erosion. Another species would be wild iris, or what people call blue flag. And it's a highly desirable species. The roots are very fibrous, very dense, and help maintain the bank. American pondweed is beneficial for most ponds, especially ones that are deeper. It's a floating leaf pondweed and provides a lot of cover and structure for the fish. Generally, it doesn't grow much more than two and a half or three and a half feet deep. And then especially in deeper ponds, it stays pretty close to the bank and can be easily fished over. All the plants that we're recommending tend to grow in shallow water, are native to Illinois, and are readily available. You can order them through a, a variety of dealers, some private and some through the soil water conservation districts. It's always best to get plants from a local source if possible because of genetic concerns. Sometimes plants from northern climates tend to be more aggressive. The best time to add structure to ponds is when they're brand new. Man-made structures are easily placed in position before the pond's even full. Aquatic vegetation, on the other hand, needs to be introduced after the pond is full, but you, the owner doesn't want to wait any significant amount of time. Older ponds, especially those that are silted in and are much shallower now and full of nutrients, unfortunately aren't good places to introduce natural vegetation and may be limited just primarily to fish attractors. It's probably best to talk to your local fisheries biologist to get additional information, especially about older ponds.